So here we have it. We have some pretty awesome Stratocasters today. Jonathan, what do you think? I think we got two pretty badass guitars. We're going to talk about a 1964, completely 100% original Fender Stratocaster built in 1964. It's in my lap right now. And we're going to talk about the differences between that and a 1963, well, it's built in 2019, but a 1963 Fender Custom Shop, super faded, no, super heavy relic, super faded Titian Coral. There you go. Direct from the Custom Shop, super limited edition. Kind of like this is a super limited edition as well. And we're going to talk about the differences between them, the, um, the form and function, why you would maybe want one versus the other, and just how we, um, what we think about both of them. So come join us on this musical journey. Let's walk down this together. So Jonathan, let's, um, let's talk about what you're holding in your hands for a little bit. Let's do it. So you've played this guitar. I have. First off, what is your first impression upon that guitar? It is amazing. It's, yes. it's um, God, it plays great. It looks cool. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's a perfect strap. It's, it's as good as any strat I have ever played, I have to say. That's, um, that's pretty high praise for, Jonathan's played a lot of strats. I've played a lot of strats. And a lot of tellies. And a lot of tellies. That's pretty much it. That's about you it. Play anything else. But this guitar right here, he's holding this guitar. This guitar has, um, it's got a 1960s vintage C-shaped neck. Yes. It's got a, it has an Indian rosewood fretboard. It's made of lightweight ash. It's got hand-wound 63 pickups in it. And it's got a five-way selector, not the three-way selector. And what's really neat, it has the 6105 frets on it. Yes. It's nice jumbo size frets. As a Which player. I like. Yes. Yeah, do you like those, right? I like those a lot. I, in fact, I've gotten used to those. That's about all I ever play. Yeah, it's strange, because I used to play just vintage frets. Right. And then I shifted over to 6105 frets, and it freaked me out at first. Then I got to where I adapted and quite liked them. And then I can kind of skate in between them. Sure. And when you, we'll get into the vintage frets in a minute. So let's talk about this guitar now, what the breakdown on it. So this is a 1964, built in, I believe, June of 64. It's got black, black bottom pickups here. Everything's original on it. Nothing's been touched in it. It had a nice sticker here at one point, so we removed that. <laughs> it's got the Brazilian board. It has a nice flame in the back of the neck, which is, I don't know if you can catch that on the camera at all, if I need to twist around, but you'll see it in pictures later elsewhere. Or check our website. It's on there as well. Um, this is a, an alder piece of wood. It's a little bit heavier than this guy as well. It is. Perhaps by a pound. So that's pretty substantial. Yes. Because um, that's a light guitar. This is really a really light guitar. Um, they're... they're the biggest difference to me is the vintage frets on this. So this has true vintage frets. They've never been redone. They're not too beat up either. They're, pretty, they're in pretty good shape. There's some wear down here where he's grooved it in. I think this guy was a, a rhythm player. He was a country gospel artist. Yeah. So a lot of rhythm playing down here. But the neck's really worn on the back, so believe me, there's some capos going on. Um, but, but playing this guitar, so let's talk about the playing of them. How does this one play? It, I mean, this this one obviously with the the, the taller frets. I mean, it's it's not like crazy low action. It's not an Ibanez, you know. So, you know, you're digging in. If I, I'm not gonna say it fights you, but it, it just makes you work in sort of the right way. Um, I think that's a good thing. It's really easy to bend. You don't have to worry about fretting out, which is great. And that's something um, we have it set up to be sort of a play like we that. do. You can, you yeah, can, you can lower the action if you wanted, obviously. Um, but I think it really excels. How it currently is with the big frets. Because uh, I remember when we first unboxed that guitar, everyone sort of oohed and odd on the playing of it. it well, because it's just it yeah, it's like amazing. Strat. It's, yeah. it feels like a a vintage Strat. <laughs> and then I'm holding a vintage Strat, and this one feels totally different. Totally different. <laughs> totally different because it was like it feels like a vintage Strat is supposed to feel in our minds. Right. I think and this one is is a true vintage Strat. We've got this set up pretty low. Yeah. So we, it's a sort of set to play. We have tens on both of them. And this one, with the vintage frets, it does, it's, you, you slip a lot. It's super buttery. I mean, it's, it's just... You uh, can, if, when you're doing bends on this, if, you're not, if you don't push in and sort of dig in the right way, your hand will slip right off. It's a totally different experience. Super fun. I've talked to, I've talked to a lot of guys who they do, the, they do a refret on it when they get a vintage piece like this. And I just, I just tend not to do that. I like to have it as original as possible. Right. Um, the, the sound of the guitar is very different. Very different. You're going to hear that in just a second. And um, I'm, again, like that's what I feel like a Strat's supposed to sound like from the '60s. And then I play this one, and, but I play this one, and it's um, there's something magical about it, though. It's not, it doesn't have 
I, what's the word? It, this one's super glassy in that middle pickup. You get the, once, once I go into middle pickup land, it's um, it, extremely what you think of as the glassy Strat. The bridge is a screamer, and then the neck up here is perfectly warm. That's where I, I would live on this neck. It, it is one of the warmer Strats I've ever heard on the neck pickup. I, I would buy this guitar just for, just for that, that setting almost, even though I'm a big fan of the middle. But it's, I mean... What's not weird about that guitar, what's cool about that guitar, there's almost like no bad tonal frequency. You know what I mean? Everything, nothing is ice picky, even when you get glassy and, and right. in that Strat territory. Everything is, is pleasant. It's just a, I don't know if that's the deal with the old pickups when they're aged and the magnets get a little weaker or what, whatever, but there, there is something magical it's, about that one. It's very responsive. Um, it's very. It's, um, now, if you're a gigging musician and you don't want to mod it, this is a tricky guitar because if you want to find those out of phase positions, you got to kind of juggle. Right. Which is, I think is fun because I'm sitting here <laughs> in our studio doing it. Like, this is cool. I found the sound. Right. Um, it takes Man. a minute, though, Live sometimes. Live might be trickier. Live yeah. is a little trickier. Yeah. So um, you might swap it out for a five way selector. Right. I know, don't, don't, don't crucify us for saying no. that. But a lot of people do that. The, um, the tones are very active on this as well. Yeah. It's, it, it swells very, very nicely. Um, I've not put the, the trim bar in it. It does have the original trim bar and the original case, which is really cool. Yes. Um, it's somewhere in this room in the caverns of who knows where. But um, yeah, so we're gonna play these guitars now for a minute. Let's see what you think.
Okay, so that was um, that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. I'm glad I got to play both of those guitars just then. And um, as I said, I, it's pretty much what we said before, is kind of like where I live on it. This um, this guitar is kind of the perfect Stratocaster in a lot of ways. It is. If you want a, a guitar that works, plays perfectly. Yes. Sounds perfectly. It sounds amazing. Um, it does sound amazing. It was, it's fun to play. This guitar is amazing. You have to work a little bit to stay on the fretboard. But at the same point, there's a mojo in this thing that is kind of. You can't really replicate that, you know. I, I can't. I can't say the neck. It, it fits perfectly. It's it's not one of those massive things, but it's it's bigger than you know a modern C, obviously. And now let's talk about like who's gonna who are these guitars for. So if you, if let's just assume if you're like seriously considering one of these, you have the means to get one, right? Which is. Cheers to you. That's awesome. Yes. But um, Good job. now, Way if you're go. doing that, it's 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 hard to say no to a true vintage, right? Yes. There's um, something magical and mysterious about that, you know. And if you're buying your guitars for investments, that's obviously the way to go. These things are doing nothing but going up at this point. Again, we had a little dip in 2008 that sort of steadied for a while, and now the bump's starting to go on. And thank you to David Gilmore for spring springboarding that one more time. Yes. And now, if you're buying a guitar that you want to have the best Fender Stratocaster and not spend twenty to thirty thousand right. dollars, you cannot go wrong with that. That was um, that was one of my favorite playing experiences I've had in a long time. And I think that's kind of like that's kind of where we wrap up on that. It's so we want your comments, your questions, your thoughts. If you have a vintage Strat, please let us know what year it is, what kind of pickups you have in there. Assuming they're the vintage pickups, not if you put some EMGs in it. That'd be really weird. <laughs> I mean, you know, to <laughs> each their own. I mean, that would be kind of awesome to see like a 61 hey. Strat with the like EMGs. I mean, they're obviously out there, but um, um, yeah. It'd be awesome. If you have one of those, please send us a pic of it. I would love to see it. We'll definitely repost it somewhere. Um, let us know about the custom shop experiences you've had too, because we've found there to be really not a better instrument on the planet at this point. So um, every time we think we found one, we always fall back to these and it frustrates us. Why do we like these beat up things? I, I will say it is funny. Vintage instruments, that's an amazing one, but you never know. I, I have yet to pick up a custom shop, though, that isn't pretty darn amazing. I, I think I've had one that was a dud. Like, okay. I had one come in the shop. Okay. And it, I, I, it well, was, yeah. That was it a was a dud. Yeah, it, wait, it waited a ton. And I, I, I was remember like, that. It's going yeah. back. Okay. Yeah, it, um, that's true. It, it, I rescind my statement. Yeah, one. It, it, one out of one. Like hundreds and <laughs> right. maybe thousands of this yes. of guitars that we played through it. But um, please, shoot us your comments, questions about anything vintage or custom shop what your thoughts are on we're going to do a whole video on talking about custom shop relics too yes so we want to get your thoughts on that uh, give us some fodder hot topic it's a hot topic I click love like and subscribe click the bell so you see our new videos thank you so much i said i love you damn i love you guys bye